All right, today I wanted to talk to you about Quillbot and using Quillbot to beat uh, AI detection. So there's been quite a, quite a few videos and blog posts about using Quillbot for this purpose. Uh, I have done a video on perplexity and burstiness and using that chat GPT prompt for beating AI detection. Um, but I wanted to see if Quillbot would be an easier way to do this. So if you're not familiar with Quillbot, um, it does quite a few different things. And I wanna make it clear that the tool is not being sold as a way to beat AI detection. Uh, it's being used as a writing aid. So it will rephrase text, it will check grammar, it'll check for plagiarism, and also does a variety of other things as well. But the way that people have been using Quillbot uh, to try to beat AI detection is they've been writing articles uh, in, with an AI writer, such as maybe Jasper or Niches or Copy.ai or even ChatGPT, for example. Uh, and so then they take that article, they drop it into Quillbot and they use this rephrasing tool. So when you put content in, and you click the rephrase button, what it will do is rewrite content. You can see it here in the right pane, and um, you'll see how it took the original 93 words and then rephrased it. So the whole key with this is, hey, I'm gonna take my AI written content, I'm gonna drop it into Quillbot, I'm gonna let Quillbot rephrase it, and then I will run it through an AI detector to see what kind of scoring I get. So let's see exactly how this worked for me. So I want to emphasize two things here. When I did the testing, I had Quillbot rewrite in the standard mode. I also had it rewrite in the creative mode. So I created five documents in ChatGPT. Uh, basically what I did is I said, write a thousand word blog post about and then I had one blog post written about electric vehicles, the benefits of walking, the importance of sleep, fly fishing for beginners, and the benefits of meditation. All of the articles were roughly between 700 and 1100 words. Uh, I think it was really important to use longer documents because I have found in my own experimentation, it's much easier for me to get to beat AI detection with short snippets of text, like up to 250 words. But when I add a lot more text, like in the context of a full document, now AI detectors are able to see patterns in sentences and paragraph length and variability. And that's, what's, that's what they key in on to give you these scores. So when you use these really small snippets of text, it's much easier to beat AI detection than when you use a full document. So I know that was a little bit of a lengthy explanation, uh, but I think it was important for you to know that so you can understand why I took the time to do this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the initial scores that all five documents received straight from originality.ai and I also use the content at scale tool. So quickly, this is originality.ai. It's a plagiarism checker and AI detector. It's a paid tool. Um, I use it for plagiarism checking and AI detection. Uh, I have a subscription to it um, and it just happens to be what I use. Another one that I use that's a free tool is called Content at Scale. They have an AI detector that's available for you uh, to use for free. Um, I don't know much about uh, how it's checking for AI. I think it's a little less stringent than originality.ai, uh, but I'm only taking a guess based on my experiments with different documents. So, Straight out of chat GPT with no rephrasing from Quillbot, here are the scores. So originality.ai, every single article, the best score was 1% original, which is pretty horrible. 
And it's uh, and to, at least to originality.ai, it's very obvious that it's AI produced content. So with content at scale, um, because I think it's a little less stringent in the way that it checks a document, you'll notice that the originality scores are higher. But even then, the 43% uh, average out of content at scale for all five documents. So then what I did is using, again, the paraphrasing tool at Quillbot, uh, I dropped the five documents in at, with standard mode, then and then check them with originality.ai and content at scale. Then I put them in and used a creative mode for rephrasing, and again, checked them in originality.ai and content at scale. So what did the scoring look like? Here is your scoring. So again, here are the five documents we talked about. Uh, the originality.ai scores with a Quillbot standard rephrasing. You'll notice the scores went up from 1% to 50, 64, 79, that's a good score, that's why it's in green, 56, choosing the right electric vehicle, 80% original. So overall, all five documents received a 66% original uh, average um, from rephrasing in Quillbot in standard mode. Content at scale uh, scores were definitely higher you can see them here for all five documents. Uh, then what was really interesting is I thought, well, I'm gonna rephrase these. I'm gonna use this um, creative mode that is offered in Quillbot. And when you take a look at these scores, these originality.ai scores from the Quillbot creative rephrasing, you see a couple jump out as being quite good, 96% original and 99. Then we get this outlier. This was the health benefits of walking. When I rephrased it in the creative mode, it went down to 2% original. And then choosing the right electric vehicle dropped to 19% original by using Quillbot's creative rephrasing mode. So, um, you know, the scores are a little bit all over the place. Uh, I think what it's going to uh, take is, like with any AI content, you have to lend your own voice to the article. You have to rewrite sections because you want to make sure it's factual. You want to make sure that it's readable. Uh, you want to make sure that you're adding your own expertise and authority into the document. So when you do all that, uh, it adds more sentence variability, paragraph length variability, um, and it should really help a lot with um, your AI detection scores as well when you, you know, put your own nuances on that document. But this is just straight out of the box. These are the scores without me doing any editing at all to any of these documents. If you decide that you want to use Quillbot, um, Here's the pricing page. Buy it annually, it's $833 a month, $100 uh, a year to use it. Uh, they do give you a semi-annual and monthly plan as well. Um, I do wanna share in the interest of transparency that I am uh, an originality.ai affiliate. Um, so I have links to all of these tools uh, in the description and just know that if you do happen to purchase originality.ai for AI detection and plagiarism detection, I do receive a commission for that. So these are the hard facts about using Quillbot for AI detection. Uh, I hope you found this useful. Uh, and um, until next time, take care.